An all-wheel drive plug-in hybrid powertrain returns in Vauxhall's Grandland in this supposedly sporty GSC model. There's no shortage of technology or ambition here, but you'll need an eye-catching deal to make the acquisition sums add up. If you're old enough to remember when Vauxhall cars were very much about bread and butter basics, then the specs of this one, the Grandland GSE, might rather stop you in your tracks. All-wheel drive, 300 PS, and a 1.6 litre petrol turbo engine paired with two electric motors that are energised by a 14.2 kilowatt hour battery with an EV range of up to 35 miles. Someone more familiar with modern Vauxhalls though might dismiss this recipe as yesterday's news. It's the same powertrain that was fitted to the top version of the old pre-facelift Grandland X, a flagship variant that didn't sell and was quietly dropped when the Grandland model got its 2021 model year update and lost its X designation. With this Grandland GSE though, that all-wheel drive PHEV powertrain shared with Stellantis Group cousin the DS7 e tense is back, but this time with a package of sporty GSE handling tweaks. Enough to justify the premium price tag being demanded here? That's a big ask. Even in this sporty GSE form, the Grandland isn't the kind of lower mid-sized SUV you're likely to want to throw around. But even so, this variant gets the Kony frequency selective dampers we tried and liked on the Astra GSE. These have a special valve that opens when you hit a bad bump. That's supposed to reduce damping force and so improve comfort but we still think you're likely to find this a very firm riding crossover, so do try before you buy. The plus side of the Kony shocks is better body control and less cornering lean, but the absence of much steering feel, the hesitant eight-speed auto gearbox and the relative lack of grip from the eco-focused tires all discourage you from dynamic daring do. With 300 PS on tap from the all-wheel drive powertrain with its twin EV motor embellished 1.6 litre petrol turbo engine, the Grandland GSE is at least pretty quick. The rest of 62 mile an hour sprint is dispatched in 6.1 seconds on the way to a maximum of 146 miles an hour. There are three drive settings, Sport, where the car combines the power of the electric and petrol motors to offer livelier performance, and all-wheel drive, plus there's also electric, where the car uses only the 14.2 kilowatt hour battery powered electric motor, resulting in an ultra quiet and smooth drive with zero exhaust emissions, offering a WLTP range of up to 35 miles. As you'd expect, the Grandland GSE gets sportier styling to differentiate it from lesser models. There's a GSE-specific front bumper with a gloss black protective front skid plate. And at the rear, there's a gloss black rear protective skid plate with a three-fin diffuser. Plus, you get some big, eye-catching 19-inch wheels that presumably don't do much for the EV driving range. Otherwise, apart from the yellow GSE badging, it's much like any other Grandland plug-in hybrid. Inside, similar token efforts at sporty differentiation feature a GSE branded Alcantara upholstered sports seats, metal look trimming, alloy effect sports pedals and a bespoke perforated leather steering wheel are the highlights. As usual with the Grandland, you get two big digital displays for instruments and infotainment. Ahead of the driver is a display up to 12 inches in size, offering up essential information while the central 10-inch display controls all infotainment via a touchscreen. You survey all of this from a seating position that isn't especially commanding, though that suits this sporty model quite well. Two adults will fit quite comfortably in the back, three would be a squash. 
Boot space is compromised by the PHEV drivetrain restricted to a hatchback like 390 litres. If that's priority for you in a sporty Vauxhall of this size, you'd be better off with an Astra Sports Tourer GSE, which offers 516 litres. Pricing for this GSE variant started from around £46,000 at the time of this test. That's £1,340 more than the top ultimate spec version of the ordinary Grandland plug-in hybrid, which is only front-wheel driven. Grandland hybrid pricing actually starts from around £41,000. To give you some perspective, the ordinary conventional 1.2-litre petrol Grandland models start from around £30,000. At least GSE spec gives you plenty of kit. The price includes Vauxhall's IntelliLux adaptive LED pixel headlight system and 19-inch gloss black bicolour diamond cut alloy wheels. You get a 360-degree panoramic parking camera, LED front fog lights, keyless entry, a partially heated windscreen and a power-operated tailgate with a foot sensor. Inside, there are ergonomic active heated GSE sports-style front seats approved by the AGR. These include six-way adjustability, cushion extension, lumbar adjustment and are GSE embossed with black Alcantara inserts and sports side bolsters. You also get alloy effect sports pedals, a load-through facility in the rear and a luggage restraining net. There's also a raft of safety technology, including lane departure warning, speed sign recognition, lane assist and automatic emergency braking. Additional safety features include side blind spot assist, highway integration assist and lane positioning assist. Let's get to the figures. We've covered the 35 mile WLTP rated all electric driving range. It's actually more like around 25 miles in real world use. And we also ought to apply real world thinking to projections of likely fuel economy because the Fantasyland official combined WLTP figure up to 217.2 MPG on the combined cycle clearly isn't likely to be replicated by the average owner. As a featherfoot, we suppose 80 to 90 mpg might theoretically be possible, but your realistic average is going to be much less than that. Rely on the petrol engine alone and you'd struggle to average 35 miles per gallon. Interestingly, the WLTP CO2 return for this GSE variant at 30 grams per kilometre is, like the fuel figure, fractionally better than that of the front-driven 225 PS hybrid model at 31 grams per kilometre. That'll mean attractively low BIK figures. Bear in mind that you'll need to find £500 extra to upgrade your Grandland GSA to a model incorporating a 7.4 kilowatt hour fast charger that would be capable of accepting charge from anything faster than a domestic three pin socket. This halves charging time when charging with a typical garage 7.4 kilowatt wall box and it really ought to be standard. Charging the 14.2 kilowatt hour battery takes 3.5 hours with a standard mode three cable or one hour 45 minutes if the optional onboard charger has been fitted. Insurance is group 34E. It's really hard to see who's going to choose a Grandland GSE at Vauxhall's requested premium price tag. And the sales omens aren't good. Vauxhall has already dropped this all-wheel drive PHEV powertrain once in this Grandland because it didn't sell. And Peugeot has had to do the same thing with all-wheel drive PHEV versions of the 3008. And the same powertrain in a DS7 e tent sells in vanishingly small numbers. If, for whatever curious reason, you decided you still wanted the ultimate Vauxhall Grandland, though, there are things about this GSE version you might like. It feels quite special to look at and sit in, and as long as you don't mind a firmish ride, the handling tweaks work OK. Plus, despite its exalted price tag, it's still cheaper than some segment PHEV rivals and will be tax efficient to run. There's extra rarity value too, but here perhaps for all the wrong reasons. <laughs>